Now we can introduce a couple more ideas and terminologies that we can uh, use while analyzing the response of our systems to a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal input or a harmonic input. So the first idea we're going to look at is transmissibility. And it's really nothing new, it's just a specific transfer function that we find where the output and the input are like quantities. So for example, we could see the output force or what we call the transmitted force versus our input force or what we call the excitatory force. Uh, also, we could do position versus position. If we have a prescribed input uh, position, x naught, and we can have an output position or what we call the transmitted position. So when we refer to transmissibility, we're really just talking about a specific transfer function where the output and the input are like quantities. Uh, previously, we looked a lot at an input force versus an output displacement. Here, it's an output force to an input force, output displacement to input displacement. Now, putting that aside for the moment, we can look at a vibration isolator. And this kind of ties into the last problem that we looked at, uh, where we have some rotating machine like we had in the last problem, and as it rotates, as it vibrates, it's going to be transmitting these forces into the floor, into the shop floor or our house or whatever else it's connected to. And the problem this creates is as it is putting force into the floor, the floor is going to vibrate a little bit, and those vibrations are going to go and be picked up by some of our other devices. So if we have some sort of recording equipment uh, also in the room or on the shop floor, it's going to pick up these vibrations from the machine that's rotating. If we have other machines that are operating that might be precision tools, uh, they might not uh, work well if there's some extra vibration acting on them. The issue is going to be that if the floor is vibrating, their precision is going to go down. So we want to sometimes minimize how much of this vibration, how much of this force is going into this common floor. So what we can do is we can put what we call a vibration isolator between the machine, the rotating machine, and our ultimate uh, floor that's going to be resting on. And what this isolator is, is going to be basically a spring and a damper. Uh, but we get to choose because all their, the whole point of the vibration isolator is to reduce the amount of force that's going into the kind of common base here, the floor, we can choose the K and the B such that we can minimize or mitigate the amount of force that's going through. So by specifically choosing the K and the B, we can uh, select how much of that force is going to be transmitted. So that's the idea of a vibration isolator. Now, last uh, new thing here, we can look at a, a relative frequency Bode diagram. Now, previously, and I would say more commonly, the way we use the Bode diagram is that we, are, we have a transfer function uh, numerically, and then we are plotting it, and we're seeing how the magnitude responds to a frequency input and how the phase responds to a frequency input. But what we're going to look at in the following example, and um, examples like it, is making a relative frequency Bode diagram. And basically what we're going to be doing is changing the x-axis of our diagram from input frequency to the ratio of input frequency to natural frequency. Uh, and this is only going to be useful really to us for one degree of freedom systems. Uh, when we have multiple degrees of freedom in our system, we'll have multiple natural frequencies. And then what are we going to be uh, investigating relative to becomes a question. So this is really for these 1DOF systems. Right, so what we're going to be doing is um, making our transfer function, but really we're making it with an unknown natural frequency initially. And this is useful, Why, when do we use the relative frequency Bode diagram? Uh, really when we're designing a system and maybe up front, we don't know what the K, the M, the B necessarily are right away, and we're trying to choose them to have some output that's desired. Uh, the previous examples, we kind of already had a system built, so we already knew its transfer function, and we were just doing a pure analysis. Again, the relative frequency is useful when we're more at a design type of problem. So what we do is we get our transfer function in terms of a natural frequency, and then once it's that's the only unknown or the only variable in the transfer function, we're going to set that natural frequency equal to 1. And now we have made, it is a different transfer function, uh, which I'll denote in our example that it is different, 
because when we plot that transfer function, the Bode diagram of that transfer function, it will be a relative frequency Bode diagram. So again, this is useful when we don't know the natural frequency up front, we're trying to design it, um, we can refer to this and we'll see in the following example how that's going to be helpful to us.